It's funny because one of the very first things we write about in the book is clarifying your dreams. And with that underscore, your dreams, not the dreams of everybody else. And one of the best ways to really get in touch with your dreams is to unmoor your mind. And unmooring your mind is being quiet and sitting with yourself and being a little bit uncomfortable. It's sitting on a park bench for a half an hour and not grabbing your phone or texting somebody or like ordering groceries. It's being quiet and to try to have those thoughts bubble up. We need that time and we don't take that time. I mean, the, those moments where we could be taking that time, we're multitasking, trying to get 500 things done. So step one. What are your dreams and your dreams and trying to like develop that personal intuition. And I love your work so much because you do talk about that relationship you have with yourself and building that relationship you have with yourself, your vision, your values, your own sense of strengths and weaknesses, not the ones that people told you, but your own self-assessment of what it is that you're really, really good at, what it is that you like, and what it is actually that you really don't like and never want to do again. So that quiet time is really valuable. And so when we also talk about risk-taking and dreaming, we really advocate an, a kaleidoscope perspective to helping you clarify your dreams. So, so when we say that, we are not just workhorses. You know, that certainly can occupy a tremendous amount of time for us, but we should have fuller lives than that. So when we think of kaleidoscope dreaming, it's thinking about a kaleidoscope and all the different chambers and the different chips that give it balance. That's what makes it so beautiful. So taking that metaphor a little bit further, you know, think about certainly your career, what it is you want to do to earn money. Think about your life and maybe it's physical fitness, mental health, emotional health. Maybe it's your, you know, your family, your parents, kids. Think about impact in service. I mean, we are part of a community. We coexist in a culture. In order to reap the benefits of the best culture, we have to give in some sort of way, shape, or form. So maybe internally or service organizations. It doesn't have to be huge amounts of time, but there is something about connectiveness that really is valuable intrinsically for us that we have to, I don't say, shouldn't say have to, but I would say as a part of society, you should. And then the third, the final piece is joy. What do you do for fun? What do you do for your fun? Like, on a Saturday night, I've got two kids. They'll say, let's go see, I don't know, whatever Marvel movie is out this week. I'll go, I'll have fun. But I tell you, if I have three hours on a Saturday night, that is not what I would prefer to do. <laughs> and so trying to find what's fun for you because that fun thing makes everything else, else worth it. If I can work hard and I do work hard, we all work hard. But if I'm not having fun in my life, it kind of sucks. It's not worth it. And it leads to burnout. So maybe that's the risk that people in your in our community need to take is trying to find a little bit more fun in your life. For themselves. That that qualifier is huge. Mm -hmm.